first set the BPM to 150. But hang on. Elenium has been incorporating a lot more rock and pop punk elements into his new stuff, so to give it a more live feel and to annoy DJs around the world, let's make it 156. On your drum rack, find a nice chunky kick, like the one I named here, Chunk. Cut out any unnecessary lows, because even though he's chunky, he's got to make room for the other guys. And by the other guys, I mean bass, but more on that later. <laughs> Pick an equally chunky snare. If your snare doesn't have a long enough tail like this one initially had, you can go Command G to group it and duplicate the sample. Fade it in so that you don't have clashing transients, and you can put a hybrid reverb on 100%. Set it to convolution mode and select any plate reverb. Dubsteppy drum pattern that looks like this. Shuffled hi-hat loop. Crash on the first beat. And reverse it on the last beat. Open hats on the quarter note. Pick two different samples and alternate them. Pan one a little bit to the left, and the other a little to the right. Each one of these gets a utility as well. Set it around 110 to 140%, but don't get caught up in the technicality, as long as it's around those numbers. Big sweep down. Group all the symbols and sweeps together. Add a final bit of EQ, and sidechain it to the kick and snare. All together, the drums will sound like this. Write a chord progression. This is what I used. To make the lovely super saws that you're hearing, use this trick that I stole from AU5, where instead of adding unison onto your saw oscillator and detuning it, you map Serum's chaos knob turned all the way up to the coarse pitch of your saw oscillator. Set the chaos knob to sample and hold mode and inside the matrix, double click output and set the output to 20. Dephasing the saw oscillator by entering the wavetable editor, right clicking and hitting randomize all. Now they are no longer super saws. They are chaos saws. Chaos. Add an arpeggiator on chord trigger mode on a 1 8 rate to get the gated super saw effect without having to write it all manually. But if you want to get a MIDI version of it, Create a new MIDI track and set the input to your chaos saw. Arm the track and hit record. Add dramatic effect by placing gaps where the first snare hits. Duplicate your chaos saw and pan one to the right and one to the left. This leaves space for all the other things we layer on later. And if you're wondering what processing I use, this is it. Layer in a bunch of Foley sounds for little transient layers that help the saw rhythm cut through. These are the sounds I used. On this one, I pan it slightly to the left. And this one is panned slightly to the right. I use Ableton samplers along with the MIDI from the chords to play these. This lets me match the rhythm and pitch of the saws exactly, so they're good layers. And all together, that sounds like this. Dude. No! Do not engage! I'm a new man. I have grown. I'm not arguing with you anymore. By the way, hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Over here at From Bedroom to Banger, I help you become a better producer by sharing the stuff I know and some tips that some of the professionals use as well. And before I show you how to thicken this up, I want to take a second to talk to you about this video's sponsor, 
So your album's all finished and you're thinking of releasing it independently. Let me give you a tip here. So if you got your collection of music, you're set on releasing it as an album. I'm gonna drop some truth bombs right now. You're gonna have a bad time if nobody knows who you are yet. And sadly, that means people's attention spans just are non-existent these days. Cause once that album is out, you're gonna disappear from people's thoughts as you spend the next year working on whatever is next, Sag. But here's the solution. You're actually better off releasing each song as a single each month for an entire year. That way you're on your fans mind and each release has the potential to find even more fans. But wait, Ash, you said that's that's expensive. I'm independent. I don't have record label money. Yuck. And so let's map this out. If you wanted to do uh, the 12 releases per year uh, for some distribution services, you're paying up to $30 per upload. Oh my gosh, that's like $360 a year on a monthly release schedule. And that doesn't include the royalties that you owe to the distributor. That sounds terrible, but... Oh, not with this video sponsor, DistroKid. That's right, DistroKid back at the sponsor. If you wanted to follow this exact same release schedule using DistroKid, you'd only be paying $20. And what's that? You're saying, no, that's not per song. No, that's for the year. Yes, that's right. DistroKid lets you upload unlimited songs. Unlimited songs for only $20 a year. So if you've been watching my videos and are pumping out bangers, you could even release twice a month and your wallet wouldn't even break a sweat. On top of that, DistroKid doesn't take a cut of your earnings. You keep 100%. I've used DistroKid for years and they've been nice enough to sponsor this video. Oh, and to sweeten the deal because you're a lovely viewer of this channel, you can get your first year even cheaper. 7% off with my VIP link. Links down below. Don't get me wrong, I love albums. The process of writing them is amazing. Until you're ridiculously well well established and your fans are begging for it save the album for later release your songs as singles and distrokid helps you do that anyway thanks distrokid for sponsoring go sign up use my vip link to get seven percent off now let's get back to the video now this sounds good but we're missing a crucial part of the song make a bass line if you're struggling to write one start by using the root notes of your chord progression copy and paste them into a new midi track and taking it from there the bass is two layers this is the first one to make this crunch bass, open up Serum and deface the initial patch once again. Run it through Distortion and max it up all the way. Set the first envelope to pluck mode, which looks like this. Add the same arpeggiator to match with the saws. For the processing, I like to use Utility to center the bass. Set it to mid side mode by right clicking here and turning it all the way to the left for mid. Set up an EQ and saturator to shape the sound and give it some beef. To give the bass a little more body, push Ctrl F and type in kick tight. Click this to load a corpus on the kick tight setting. Click this little triangle on the side here and set the MIDI from to the bass track it's on. This keeps corpus in tune as the bass changes notes. Don't forget the OTT at the end. The second layer is a harmonic sub. Make this in Serum by loading in a sine wave and then editing the wavetable to these settings. Set the wavetable position to around here so that slight harmonics come out and thicken the sub. Assign LFO1 to the level with this shape to act as a makeshift wave shaper. Turn on arpeggiator once again and adjust the gate to give it a bit of attack. Add a utility and click mono, just to be safe. And all together, it sounds like this. And if you've been on this channel long enough, you should all know by now, we can't just leave the song sounding like gated super saws super land it's time for some top lines and leads add a vocal chop lead but to get that elenium paper thin tone use the free plugin m auto pitch to tune it and form it shift it down a few steps combine that with an overdrive set on these settings eq to be safe and cut out all the lows and of course our good friend ott to pull out the distortion that we just added distortion He's great. A little bit of reverb for space, and that's gonna sound like... Hang on. That ain't thick enough. That's right. Duplicate it. Select the samples, enter the warp mode, and select Complex Pro. 
bring it down one octave or 12 semitones and set the formants to around here or till when the vocal sounds like deep down low like that copy and paste the same processing but on the overdrive to 786 hertz to distort all of the formant frequencies we just added now this is getting a little repetitive so add in a little counter melody how do i make that two layers one that's uh clearly just oh god super saws <laughs> I guess I'm stuck with these. Super saws are now my worst nightmare. And all I can do is scream. Filter. Add a scream low pass filter. Damn, I really got to work on these transitions. For the processing, the good old wombo combo and some EQ. Duplicate and play some different notes on a lower layer. It's literally just an octave down. And to tie it all together, have both synths play some sick riffage from a pop punk song from 2011 that only three of you will have probably heard of. Oh, and a, and, and a pluck layer. That's also super sauce. Finally, make sure everything is all grouped together and sidechained with a plug-in like duck or compressor so that your drums are extra punchy. These are the shapes and settings I end up using. Bonus points if you know this lead and if you made it this far. If there are any other artists you want me to break down, comment them below. If you support what I'm doing, even just liking this video and subscribing to my channel helps my content reach more people. If you want to support me even further, consider joining my Patreon so I can keep making videos and tutorials and content for you. Even just the $2 tier helps me out way more than you realize. Plus, you'll find some goodies on there too, including this project file. And now, this is what everything sounds like all together. Also, one last thing, if you're in the Toronto area, I will be opening for Arm & Hammer May 7th with my new slash old solo project directive. So come through, come hang out, I'll play this entire cover in full. Should be fun, but go like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Patreon. Thanks for watching, love you, bye!